playback and action. Chris, I found the trap door. Hurry. Hurry. Thank you. Righty-o. There we go. So uh, I promise that uh, we'll circle back to whatever craziness just happened here a second ago. Um, but first, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Simon Legrand. I work as an innovation supervisor at Untold Studios in London. In that role, I research new technologies to help in our forever chase of better and cooler visuals to put on screen. I've worked in the visual effects industry for 20 years now. That's, that's half my life. That's my entire adult life. I've lived and breathed this industry for a very long time. And I've seen a lot of technological progress. I've been part of some technological progress and I've witnessed a lot. We went from 3D or CGI <coughs> renders that were clearly CGI renders to the kind of absolutely mind-boggling detail that we get to watch on the big screen and small screen every day now. That technological progress was focused on things like lighting, for example. We went from very basic approximation of how light behaves to now simulating very closely to how photons truly behave in real life on a computer so that the final image is more realistic. We also learned how to simulate elemental effects like water, smoke, and fire. These effects were in the domain of the impossible when I first joined the industry, doing a big giant crashing wave in CGI and making it look real was impossible. Now, again, we're simulating water and fire in a way that is very close to how it truly behaves in real life. All of that on a computer processor. M my favorite one is characters. We went from characters that just look quite obviously CGI, and I'm sure that if you think back to some of the early 2000 films, you might be able to think of an example or two, to now being able to create fully digital humans that stand next to their human alter ego, and you'd barely be able to know which is which. But I'm not here to give you a history on visual effects. I could, I totally would if I could, because I love talking about it. But I'm here to talk about another type of technological leap that has hit the industry quite recently. And that's what you see here today, virtual production. This camera here was tracked. The blue lights that you see around you are helping to track this camera over here so that the camera knows where it is and can tell the screen which angle to be looking at to create that correct viewpoint. That's virtual production. That's the crux of it. We call it ICV effects in the biz, but virtual production will do just fine. This technology, the reason I'm very excited and keen to use it is because visual effects up until now was very much the domain of post-production. So a film would get shot, green screens would be all over the place. I'm sure you're all very familiar with these behind the scenes photos with giant green screens everywhere. Or some guy in a green suit with a tennis ball and a stick. And that's still, that has its place. We still use those. But virtual production as a technological leap 
has brought what used to be just done after the fact. It has brought it right then and there in the middle of the film shoot during production. Now, what that helps with is synergy between visual effects artists and the director, the producer, the director of photography, the set designer. Now, everyone can see what will be in the final frame right then in front of them. They can see it through the camera's viewfinder. As you saw today, the performers, the actors, can see when the explosion is going off. They can see the shrapnel flying above their head. They can react to it. But more importantly, we can react to them. We can also edit what's on the screen in real time so that it fits the performance better. The director, if the director asks, if the director demands, they don't ask, they demand, <laughs> to move the sun to the other side, we can do that. If the DOP sculpts, light sculpts, a beautiful frame of the performers and decides, you know what? I don't like the key light coming from this side. It looks weird. Let's move the sun this way again. Or let's remove these buildings. We can do that. That's the importance of bringing the visual effects to the set. This fast ability to adapt to each other as departments is invaluable. It saves time, it saves money, it saves a lot of heartache down the track. And to be perfectly honest, it's a lot more fun than going through notes on Slack for days on end. I'm excited about this technology because it impacts my day-to-day -day life. Instead of you know, often being behind my computer for days on end, I get to go on set and do my thing. It makes me feel like a filmmaker, which for someone who's worked for 20 years in the film industry, it's kind of better late than never. <laughs> but really, what excites me more, even more than just how it impacts my own career and those of us who are already in the, in the industry, is how it can be used by all of you. These screens used to be the domain of very large productions, Hollywood productions. They were expensive and cutting edge. Now, they're starting to pop up everywhere. There was one at Greenwich University, next door to where I live. I didn't even know it was there until the fine folks at TED contacted me. Everywhere in the world, these screens are popping up, and they're accessible. They're there, especially in universities. They won't really go anywhere without somebody using them, using them creatively, especially. And as much as I'd like to think that I'm super creative and I can think of all the things you could do with this screen, I don't. But you guys do. You could use mirrors, you could use weird cameras, lenses, you could shoot the other way around, use the screen for reflections on somebody's face or clothing. There are so many really fun ways that you can use a large screen, a massive screen, with a real-time environment on it that can be animated. So I'd like to encourage you all who are at university or have any kind of connections to a screen or even live in a city that has that kind of uh, technology to reach out, see how you can get involved, try things. I remember for me, the aha moment was when I was working on a music video for the Chemical Brothers. Um, Untold Studios and I, we, well, uh, me at Untold Studios, we, we uh, build these many environments for, for the music video. And then we took these environments to the set. And we shot in one of the biggest stages in London at Ari. Huge 360 screens. 
And it was quite stressful because we had a lot to do and the project was really complicated and we had two days to shoot it. So for me, it was all a bit of a blur. But I do remember thinking like, wow, like we're doing something quite special here. We shot on the Thursday, we wrapped on the Friday night, we all went home to sleep for 48 hours straight. And then on the Monday, I came to work and we got the edit. Essentially, the editor had been awake all weekend cutting the music video together. And I saw this edit and I was like, for the first time in my life, I, I thought to myself, we could almost just release that as is. It looked so close to finished. Now, that's not to downplay all of the amazing post visual effects work that we did on top of it to really bring it up to the quality that the Chemical Brothers deserve. Um, but it, was, it clicked in my mind that if you approach virtual production from the standpoint of, I want to get a final frame in the can, in the camera, that removes all of the laborious time that you have to spend in post to be able to make a really interesting sci-fi or something else short film. It opens up a door to new worlds. I was talking to somebody before about the fact that, isn't it crazy that a small indie filmmaking team in Manchester or London could just shoot something that's happening on Mars and then go home with the footage and not have to do any post-production on it? It's just there. It's like being on Mars. If you shoot it right, if you do your homework, if you make a really great looking environment, you can go home with a short film that's set on Mars. That's pretty cool. So, to wrap this up, my speech was very much just a way to buy time. My editor has been running around. Uh, no? <laughs> it's no, no? Not yet? All right, cool. <laughs> Never mind. So I'm going to ramble on a little bit longer. <clears throat> <laughs> the aim of what I want to do with this technology is be able to do it so well that no post is required. I think it's possible, just like the technological progress that I've seen in the past, going from barely human-looking characters to almost perfect CGI characters. This technology behind me, powered by game engines and other types of engines that are all starting to come out now, are becoming crisper and crisper and more able to do extremely compl complicated graphics, whilst keeping it real time so that we can move the camera around, so that the explosion can go off, so that the buildings can crumble, and so that the performers can feel immersed in this new and magical environment. Um, now I'm definitely going to have to wrap my talk. And in a few seconds, we'll uh, show you the result of what we shot a second ago. Thank you. Stop. We have to go. No, we can't. No, no, no. If we don't go, we're going to die. I won't abandon them. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 Come on again for their amazing performance. <laughs> and my friend Humby, who's fired because the edit was late. <laughs> Thank you.